in Azure Data Factory, there are several methods we can use to implement incremental data loading. For example, we can use the watermarking method, last modified date, and data load methods. Interestingly, we can also use the change data capture technique in Dataflow to implement incremental data loading. The CDC will track and capture changes such as insert, update, and delete in your source data, which allows you to load only the changed data into your destination for efficient data integration. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can implement an automated incremental data loading from the ADLS Gentoo to Azure database using the change data capture. Let's get started. As usual, let's take a look at the source data for this project. I'm going to come to this file and I've got this sales 2015 with all these columns. And I'm going to come to this folder and I've got 2015 to 2025 CSV files. To get the project started, we're going to first create an hierarchical namespace storage account in the Azure portal. So I'm going to come here and in the Azure portal, I'm going to click on storage account. Alternatively, you can even search in this menu. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to click on the plus sign to create a storage account. Now, under the basic tabs of the create a storage account, I'm going to provide a subscription and the resource group, which are automatically detected in this case. And I'm going to give the storage account a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one CDC Cornerstone. And this should be unique. And once this is fine, I can move to the next part. So I'm going to maintain the East US region and I'm going to come to the advanced tab and I'm going to scroll down and check the enable hierarchical namespace. This is going to give us the data lake storage gentle. So click on that and click on review plus create. And this is going to be validated. And as soon as this is done, I'm going to click on create. So that's been created. Now we will go ahead and create Azure Data Factory. So I'm going to come to this tab and then I'm going to come to the Cornerstone Analytics RG Resource Group. And I want to go to the marketplace by clicking on this create. Now in the create, I can set for Azure Data Factory and click on the search. So we have the data factory service, click on that. And I want to create a new data factory. And again, I'm going to maintain the subscription and the resource group. I'm going to call this one CDC Cornerstone ADF. Again, this should be unique. And I'm going to maintain the region, nothing to do in the Git configuration. So the tags, just click on this review plus create. And then we're going to click on create. So this is going to be submitted for deployment. And let's check this out. So we can see the hierarchical namespace storage has been created. I'm going to click on this go to resource and we're going to go ahead and create a container in this newly created storage account. Under the data storage, click on containers and then I want to click on create and I'm going to call this one CDC data and then click on create at the bottom. So I'm going to ingest the 2015 and 2016 data into the newly created container. So click on that and then click on the upload button and I want to browse through the local environment on my laptop. So I'm going to choose the two 2015 and 2016 CSV files, click on OK and click on upload. So we have the two data in the newly created container of the CDC data storage account. Let's check this out. Now you can see the ADF is ready. I'm going to click on this go to resource. Now we can go ahead and launch the Azure Data Factory Studio. Now, before we do that, we're going to create a table in the Azure SQL database, and this is going to be the table that's going to hold our data. Now, we're going to load fully and incrementally using the Azure Data Factory Data Flow CDC. So, I'm going to come here, and in this environment, I can launch the query editor, and I can use the enter ID to log in, which is more faster, click on that. And then I want to come in and copy this create table and select queries. So control V and we're going to run this. This is going to be sales data table containing the order date, year, month, region, subcategory to the sales column with the appropriate data type. So I can go ahead and run this query. So this has been created and I want to go ahead and check the new created table to see if there's any record. So run and when I click on the result tab, 
no records to display. This is cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch the Azure Data Factory, and I'm going to create our linked services to the source and the destination. I'm going to create the data set to the source and the destination, and I'm going to use the data flow in the ADF, and then we're going to implement the change data capture. So I'm going to click on the Launch Studio in the Azure Data Factory. I'm going to click on this to expand, go to Manage, and then I'm going to click on New Linked Service. Now this is going to be to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So click on Continue. I'm going to stick with this name, Azure Data Lake Storage, as the name of the linked service. And I'm going to point to my Virtual Studio Enterprise subscription. And I'm going to choose the newly created storage account which is the cdc cornerstone and i will click on the test connection and this should give us a successful connection so click ok i want to go ahead and create the link service to the destination which is the azure sql database and click on continue i can maintain this name i can choose my subscription and i can choose the server name which is cornerstone server and i'm going to choose the database name which is the cornerstone analytics database and this is going to be using the sql authentication so for the username i'm going to maintain this cornerstone admin which is my username you can see that here so you can see server admin cornerstone admin login so i'm going to maintain that and for my password this is up i'm sure correct I'm going to click on test connection and again this should give us a successful connection so click on create now having created the two linked service we're going to create our data flow so i'm going to click on the auto tab and then we're going to see the data flows and i'm going to click on this ellipsis and i'm going to create a new data flow and i'm going to use this tab so i'm going to call this on data flow for cdc and once I'm done, I can collapse this properties pane. And then under the factory resources, we have this data flow for CDC properly named. And we're going to choose the source of the data set, which is going to be the Azure Data Lake Storage tool. So, and I'm going to give this meaningful name the output stream name. I'm going to call this one ADLS Gen 2. And I'm going to move up a little bit. Now, as I'm moving on, it is important you enable the data flow debug. So let me just click on OK as that is going to be going on. And uh, let me just change the name here. So, OK, uh, let me just use ADLS Gen 2 as the output stream name. So this should be fine. And then we'll go ahead and create our data set. So I'm going to click on this new, and then I want to set for Azure Data Lake Storage Gento. Now, don't forget our data set is a comma separated value CSV. So we're going to choose the delimited text as the format. So we go continue. And then I'm going to just modify this name and call this one delimited text source. And then I'm going to pick the link service we've created, the Azure Data Lake Origin tool. And I'm going to browse through the file path, which is the container. And if there's any folder in that container, but we don't have any folder, we just have the container name and the tool save 2015 and 2016. So we can see the data here. Click OK. So I'm going to click OK because you know this is fine. Our data indeed contain the first row as error. And we're going to import the connection store type. So click OK. So we've created the data set to the output stream. Okay, so I want to go to the source option. Now, this is the core part of this video. This way, we're going to, we can enable the change data capture. So at the bottom here, we can see change data capture. Now, when you click on this, it's going to give you more context to what this is doing. So once enabled, this source will read the new data only since previous run or read all data for the first run, depending on what you want to achieve. I'm going to click on this to enable it and we're going to see this run mode. So there are two things here. We have the incremental changes only or if you want to perform a full load first and then incrementally later on. So we're going to perform a full load first. We're going to load the 2015 and 16 combined into the SQL table and then we're going to incrementally load all the data later on. So I'm going to click on this full load on first run and then incremental and then I can click on, let me just move this down a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna click back on this and I'm gonna choose the sync, the destination, which is the 
Azure SQL. So for the sake, I'm going to call this one Azure SQL. And if this name is fine, we can move to the creation of data sets. So I'm going to click, okay, this is not acceptable. Let me just combine them together. And I'm going to create the data set. So again, for the data set, click on new. And I'm going to search for Azure SQL database. Click on continue. I'm going to maintain the name Azure SQL database table. And I'm going to pick the Azure SQL database linked service. So we're going to choose the name of the table now. The Azure Data Factory can actually create a new table for us, but we want to have control over the table. So this has been created. So I'm going to choose the sales data table we just created and then just maintain the input schema and then click OK. All right. So um, that's been sorted. Now we're going to go ahead and create our pipeline and then use the data flow for CDC into the pipeline. We can run it. And then we're going to incrementally load by scheduling the pipeline. So under the factory resource, seat, now I can see data flow debug has been enabled, which is really important. So click on this ellipsis for pipelines and we create a new pipeline. So I'm going to just drag across this data flow for CDC and I can just give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one pipeline um, for CDC. And once I'm happy, I can close this and this has been properly named. So make sure data flow debug is enabled with the screen check mark and we don't need to do anything special. Just click on debug. So we're going to see, oh, data set is required. So I'm going to close this for now. And uh, let me see, I'm going to come back here. Okay. And I'm going to move up a little bit. So we have the data set created for the source. Oh, sorry, we haven't you know, picked this. So I'm going to pick the delimited text. So this is really important. And then let's go back to the pipeline and then click on debug. So you can see it's now running. And let's just wait to see the final outcome. There we go. The pipeline succeeded. So I can see we have the succeeded status. I can click on this output and then I can see more details about what is going on now let's go ahead and check this out in this destination the sales data so i'm going to go back and query this table click on run and there we go we have the data now let's perform a simple group by so again i'm going to as we've done in previous video i want to sum the total sales by year just to see how things is going so i'm going to call the sales data column and we're going to call this on total sales and we're going to use the group by plus the year column and then we can just run the query and let's see so we have the total sales for 2015 and 2016 based on the files we drop in the container now i'm going to come back here and we're going to schedule this by adding a trigger so i'm going to add trigger and i want to create a new trigger so click on that and i'm going to choose this and create a new and we're going to specify the name of the trigger. I'm going to go with this trigger one. And we have different kind of types. We have the schedule, tumbling window. We have storage event and custom events. So this is going to be a schedule. And it's going to start today. And I'm going to use this time zone. And this is going to run every two minutes. And we're going to start this. Um, I'm not going to terminate this. OK. So this is going to start now. And it's going to be running every two minutes. So click OK. And I'm going to click OK. So we're going to go ahead and publish all of this and click on Publish. All right. So as that is being published, I'm going to go ahead and load more data into this source. So click on Browse. And then I want to load the 2017 to 2020. Click on Open. And then click on Upload. And then we have more data. So. Now you can see this has been published. So I'm just going to wait for about three minutes and then come back here and query the data and we're going to see the changes. Now let's quickly check the monitor of the trigger. I'm going to come back here and then I can expand this. I can go to monitor. Under the monitor, we can see we have the pipeline and then we have the trigger runs. So I'm going to click on that and then we can see that this succeeded. So you can see this, the first one and the second one. And let's go ahead and query the data again. And there we go. So we can see the data for the 2017, 
2018, 2019, and 2020 based on the additional files we ingested into the container 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is how we can implement change data capture in Azure Data Factory data flow to incrementally load data from the ADLS Gen 2 to Azure SQL database. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, comment, share, and follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.